party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode, a Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday episode of the Chad Prather Show. That's right, Tuesday is Monday's Hangover. And we are in the Mothership Studio 22, the puppet master, the perfectionist, Mark, and Super Mario Chris Cruz flying us into the nether regions of all things insanity. Welcome. Welcome, Blaze TV subscribers. Welcome, YouTubers. Screw YouTube. Um, so over all of these Facebook platforms, let me see. I wanted to talk about this yesterday, but Stuber Gear just had to have some attention. It's ridiculous how much that ego has to be fed. Uh, Susan Wachicki. Is that her name? The CEO of YouTube. She acknowledged that the platform's policy of censoring legal content that it deems to be, quote, harmful is controversial and urged governments to step in and pass stronger speech laws. That's right. That's where we're at. Speech laws. She made terrifying comments about censorship during an interview with Tide TV Hamburg. I love how these people go to places like Germany to uh, talk about suppressing speech. Uh, so where does YouTube stand on policy meant to censor legal content with a so-called harmful rating? Washiki explained how she urges governments to pass laws the platform can easily enforce. That's right. Now YouTube wants to be able to enforce the law. They want governments to pass laws they can easily enforce. YouTube. Oh, those dear benefactors, YouTube. Oh, I can't wait until they pass out some sweet, sweet justice on us all. She said, we work around the globe, and you're right. Certainly there are many different laws in many different jurisdictions, and we enforce the laws of those various jurisdictions around speech or what's considered safe or not safe, she said. What has been the controversial part is when there is content that would be deemed as harmful but yet is not illegal. So harmful. We're not talking about illegal here, Chris. Harmful. An example of that, for example, would be COVID. <laughs> I'm not aware of there being laws by government saying around COVID in terms of not being able to debate the efficacy of masks or where the virus came from or the right treatment of proposal. But uh, yet there was a lot of pressure and concern about us distributing misinformation that went against what was the standard and accepted medical knowledge. And so this category of harmful but legal has been, I think, where most of the discussion has been. So when you say accepted medical knowledge... Standard and accepted medical knowledge. Mm. Who all are you asking? You're only asking the doctors and the organizations that agree with what you believe. Because there's, there's a lot of medical information out there that goes against what you call is the standard. It's the standard. So I have been banned on Facebook a mere week away from the primary election in Texas, which is March 1st. If you haven't voted yet, I, I just implore you, if you're on the fence in any way, shape, or form, go vote for the one primary candidate, the one Republican for governor, me, that's in Facebook jail. The guy that's, that fascist book has placed in jail for telling the truth. What truth, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I'm going to read to you the comment that got me pay, placed into Facebook jail. I have a certain troll out there that loves to come at me, and she possesses a certain level of Trump derangement syndrome because, let's face it, Trump still lives rent-free in so many of your heads. And it just shows you're a sign of a weak human being. But that's beside the point. Can't call somebody a weak human being without being threatened with Facebook jail, Chris. But I digress. So, she came at me talking about all the reports about January 6th being an insurrection and how uh, she posted clips about it was just a cut and dried 100% rebellion by the people, an insurrection against the government of the United States. And here's what I said in response. This, by the way, this, this is what got me put in Facebook jail. This is the kind of thing that tells people that I'm not a good candidate for governor, but I don't agree with you. I think this makes me a good candidate. Here's what I said. I said, interesting piece of bias. I said, now pull the FBI reports saying an insurrection never happened. Because they're out there. Do more research, please, for the love of God. I know you need some bad guys in your life to make you feel better, but please 
You're an overspoiled first world brat that has no actual clue how the world works. Good God. Travel the world a little bit and realize how well off you are. You've contributed nothing to the freedoms you now enjoy. Troll the internet and create your sense of victimhood. But please spare me. I literally toy with your responses on Facebook because I'm nice and sometimes have time to waste. But your self-conceived sense of intelligence is beyond delusional. Take care. Get help. God bless. That's what I said. Seven days Facebook jail. Now, I didn't call any names. I didn't threaten any violence. I didn't say anything that violates their standards. I didn't. I said the word insurrection. I said, pull the FBI reports. Pull the FBI reports that say there was no insurrection. That's what I said. All right, but the fact that I would ever claim that, that right there, I called her an overspoiled brat, first world brat, which, by the way, we all are. We all are. It's not her. It's all of us. We all fall into the safety trap, the comfort trap of America. And don't understand how the rest of the world works. And we sit there and toy and troll on the internet. Yeah. And so a week before, a week before primary election, this is election interference. It's election interference, Chris, on the part of big social media. And I'm going to sue the f*** out of them. I'm telling you, man, this kind of thing, I'm sick to death of this stuff, man. I am sick of playing these games. You know, Greg Abbott signed an executive order about this sort of thing for it not to be allowed and legal in Texas, but this is exactly what's happening because he didn't push it through the legislative process. We still subsidize Facebook as a state. We're giving them your taxpayer dollars in order to do business in the state of Texas. No, absolutely not. This is what happens whenever you have a a low-tax state, but... It's not a smart tax state. And you start taxing people in immoral ways, and then you give that money to subsidies for people like Facebook. No, Zuckerberg. No, 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 no. This is election interference. You just thought, see, the trolls came out. The trolls came out, and they're like, ooh, we're going we're gonna to report you, report you. And Facebook listened to them. There was nothing in that statement. Now, it might be a little abrasive. It might not be your taste. It might not be the ass kissing you're used to when it comes to politicians. But, folks, you know me. That's how I talk. I'm going to call you out. You're going to call me out, and we're going to have it out, and we're going to talk about it. It's going to be fine because I got thick skin. I've never reported anybody. I don't think. Maybe one person. I've had some death threats. They probably got reported somewhere. But, you know, usually what we do with that is we we just go ahead and use our investigative teams, and we do have them, to just go ahead and find out who you are, where you live, and what your cell phone number is, just in case we ever need it. You know what I mean? That's what we do with the threats. But, but. If you're going to silence a candidate for governor, and a lot of people on Twitter said, oh, yeah, I'm sure this cowboy ass hat, I'm sure they're real, real worried about him. They are if you understood how primaries work. It's a game of percentages. Let's say I only get 5% of the vote. If I only get 5%, that's 5% that the incumbent didn't get that's going to bring his percentage down and potentially put him in a runoff election. And then guess what? We all marshal our forces against behind the candidate that's going to be after the incumbent. And guess what? He's in trouble. So, yeah, they do want to silence me, 100%. They want it where I can't answer questions. See, I answer a lot of policy questions on Facebook. People come at me, they ask me, I'm the only candidate who's actually out there using my fingers to type responses. I don't have teams. My teams don't have teams. I don't have volunteers doing it. No, there's none of that. People send me messages and say, whoever runs this account for Chad, it is me. Me. I'm the one communicating with you. So when they shut me down, I can't respond to those kind of things. And that's where we're at. Now, I'm hoping, hoping, because I emailed my Facebook representatives yesterday, I'm hoping that... um, that by the time you're watching this, the issue's been resolved. But you understand the point. Because this is serious. This is going to be real stuff. I'm on the ballot. I am currently on the Texas ballot. People are voting for me. And you're going to silence me on social media? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It's about to get interesting in the state of Texas and Silicon Valley. I can't even tell you. But when you got YouTube and the rest of them with the same attitude saying, hey, we're going to, de- we're going to deem what's harmful. Uh, so much for free speech, so much for critical thought, so much for disagreeing, uh, so much for free and fair elections. Um, I'll tell you, man, 
I, I I don't know, Chris. I you know I I sit here and I'm like it, it this this is just telling for the way we've run an entire race. I mean, it has been an uphill battle. People say, oh, so and so, they're a self funded campaign. I'm like, no, we're a self funded campaign. Worked our ass off. There's fifty two thousand miles on my pickup truck that weren't there at the first of last year, and uh, we've gotten all over the state of Texas and we've used social media. We've used whatever resources we could to get our name out there. These people say, "Well, you need to get in front of more people." I I'd have to clone myself. I mean, I've, I'm in multiple cities a day. I still find time to come in here and sit in this studio on Mondays and Wednesdays and tape episodes. And still, and as soon as I'm done here, guess what I do? I get in a truck. And I'm off to another city in Texas, off to another city in Texas. Why? Why would I set aside everything that I'm doing? Why would I set aside multiple career paths that I have, businesses, and say, all right, I'm going to run for statewide office. Why would I do it? It could be that I'm the only person in the race that's doing it for the right reasons, like that actually has conviction for your freedom and your liberty, has the, has the, uh, the, uh, has the conviction to use a platform that God's given him to actually use it for you, to fight for you. Um, I don't know, just a weird thought, weird thought. It could be that if you put me in Austin, Texas, that I might just keep that same attitude and use that platform to actually get something done that would benefit your life. And you know what I want to benefit your life with? Getting the government out of it. I want to get the government out of your life so that you can govern yourself. So that you can make your money, keep your money, own your home, own your land, retire sitting on the front porch watching your grandchildren and go off into the twilight years and ultimately into eternity with the Lone Star Spirit burning hard and bright in your heart. That's what I want. That's what I want. And uh, I, I have no revenge. I have no axes to grind. Nobody. None of that. Um, I have no ill will towards anybody. I just, and people say to me, Chris, they say, oh, you know, because I did a thing about naysayers and critics the other day on Facebook where I said, you know, if you're a naysayer, it's because there's something missing in your own life. And so you have to continually critique other people in order to try to fill that void. And people said, oh, well, you criticize Greg Abbott. No, I have never criticized the man, Greg Abbott. I've criticized his policies. I've criticized his practices, I've criticized his actions, I've criticized his governing, but I've never criticized the man. I've been around people who crack their jokes and try to put their, you know, say the little little insults and stuff. I don't, I don't party to that. I don't. I don't have anything to do with that. I, you, you're not gonna find me out there doing those kind of things because that's not the way I am. Um, even when I, even in the world of comedy and humor, when I'm making fun of people, that's still not being critical. That's just they're calling things as they are. But I have refrained from even that in this campaign. I've refrained from it in any primary opponent that's out there. I believe that we've run an election with integrity. We've had no fines from the Ethics Commission. Uh, we have made sure that at all gubernatorial candidate forums that I said that I'm not running against these primary opponents. I'm running alongside them with a common mission. We all have the same message. We just come at it from different angles and different backgrounds. You know, Colonel West comes from a military background. Don Huffines, he comes from uh, he comes from a big business background. Me, I come from a background of entertainment, successful entertainment business. We all come at it. We communicate in a different way. But at the end of the day, it's the same message. Let's get government smaller and get it out of your life at least that's my message and that's what i continue to push so you know i'm being silenced i'm being attacked and there's no reason i've said it from the very very freaking beginning that when the insiders are threatened by the outsiders it's time to make the insiders the outsiders bottom line folks it's your choice you got the opportunity to do it and whether you're in texas or wherever you live these primaries that are happening Take these same principles and apply them to the folks that are out there, the people that are running for office, who are doing it for the right reasons, who have sacrificed personally in order to go serve you. Because those are the people, when they get in office, they're going to honor your priorities and they're going to make their convictions be the things that serve you best and ultimately fight for your liberty. That's what you got to do, folks. That's what you got to do. Hey, Ronald Reagan, he saw it 40 years ago, massive inflation that we haven't seen since, well, until today. In his own words, he said inflation is as violent as a mugger and as frightening as an armed robber and as deadly as a hitman. 
And uh, right now, your retirement accounts, they're under attack thanks to the inflationary policies of this administration. If you haven't called Birch Gold, they're the best people to trust to help you diversify your 401ks and your IRAs into gold. And uh, if you haven't called them, you're missing the boat. Actually, you're treading water without a life vest. Birch Gold has your life vest. Let them help you convert an IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold. With thousands of satisfied customers, A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, you can trust Birch Gold to protect your savings. Text CHAD, I spell it Chad, to the number 989898. Do it right now to get a no-cost, no-obligation info kit. This comprehensive 20-page guide is going to reveal how gold and silver can protect your savings and how you can buy them under the umbrella of a tax-sheltered account. So do it right now. Text the word CHAD to 9898. That's CHAD to 989898, and we'll be right back. Oh, sick of big tech. I'm sick of immoral people, really. Um, there's this um, Oklahoma De- Democratic congressional candidates under fire. <laughs> under fire. I, I like I like that phrase. Um, allegedly, allegedly, verbally attacked several preteen girls while at the home of a friend who was hosting a sleepover with multiple middle age middle school age girls that were present. Uh, Abby Broyles, candidate for Oklahoma's 5th Congressional District, went to the friend's house February 11th, you know, girls' night, and became more and more aggressive as she continued to drink wine throughout the night. Oh, boy. Don't hang out at the slumber party. I'm telling you, that will drive you insane. It will, man, all them screaming youngins. Uh, She insulted the girls attending the sleepover after becoming uh, intoxicated, According to multiple people interviewed by the news outlet who said she allegedly, allegedly said one girl was an acne effer. (laughs) What? Uh, And hurled multiple insults at other young girls as well. Hispanic effer. uh, She said to one girl. Judgy effer. Said that to another one. So apparently she's just going through the room pointing out characteristics here. One had acne. One was judgy. Another one was Hispanic. One left the room in tears after being insulted by Broyles. She allegedly vomited into a laundry basket and as well into a girl's shoe. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, When asked by Nondoc if she had gone to the house where the event allegedly occurred, she denied any involvement. Call those allegations awful and false. Somebody sobered up. Yeah. Somebody sobered up, said, I saw tweets. I've been out of town on a fundraising trip, and they are awful and offensive and false, said to the news outlet. I mean, I get trolled on Twitter all the time, but I don't know how these, uh, I know these women, and I don't know what is behind this, but it's just not true. Said they could have been cooked up. Uh, Suggested the 12 and 13 year old girl's mothers were using the allegation to politically attack her. Uh, I'm running for office. You don't think this is a political attack? You don't think this is something they cooked up? You got drunk. You cussed out some kids. You puked in a shoe. Come on. It's a Saturday night. It was a Saturday night. No, I mean, really? I mean, I get decorum and I get appropriateness. We all do some inappropriate things. Come on. Am I right? Am I right? Come on, Oklahoma. Come on, Oklahoma. We do some weird stuff. We do. Um, I, I, I've probably puked in a shoe. At some point in time, uh, not while running for office, let me just say, um, I have indeed had a little too much tequila on the campaign trail. Some of you know that's a fact. Uh, cussing out preteen girls, I've wanted to strangle a couple of them. I got three girls, but they're not teen. Well, well my, they're all adults now. My girls are all adults. Um, but you know what? I beat their ass. But they were mine, right? And that's why they turned out to be such incredible human beings. Because I beat that to ass. cancel you. You and they have, and they have a good mother. on your children? Yeah. I, I beat them. <sighs> well, what? you know, I've always said, if you got a big family, you don't have to beat all the kids. You just pull one out of the herd, beat hey, that one while the others watch. Man. That's what you do. That's like cartel mentality right there. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's you, cartel mentality cartel, right there. You got to take care of the whole family. <laughs> that's right. You got to deal with the children and the children's children. Yep. Um, but, I mean, if she did it, there's worse things. Like, there's worse allegations going on with a house rep right now in Texas 
that I'm not going to say anything about. Uh, just, just there. Trust me. There's some weird text messages that are out there. But you know what? Here's the thing. Even on that situation, it's embarrassing. Like all, everybody, you've said things to people via text message that was just between y'all that when read publicly, it's embarrassing. Let me just scroll into my text messages here and just, uh, um, let me just go through my text messages. I'm gonna scroll and just randomly see what it says. Uh, just see, just see. I'm just going to scroll right here. I'm not going to give a name or anything. Um, but yeah, that could be funny. But I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, said I've, I live here now. That's awesome. I'm here half the time. Oh my God! Well, tell me. I literally do nothing but go to work and home and hang out with my dogs. Hi, I'll give you a shout when I'm down next week. Thinking of moving down there even. Oh, my goodness, we can hang out all the time. So that means I'm having sex with that person. Yes. <laughs> you understand how it, you, you take something out of its context, right? And you just like, oh, and see somebody say, oh, he, where's, where's he moving to? Who's moving where? What? He's now moving down there to be with this person? So you see what I'm saying? But you throw any kind of innuendo, whether it's sexual or flirtatious, then it gets real embarrassing. Now, there's some stuff going on out there that's more than just a little innuendo. There's some things that have been said, right? And this is on the part of people who are either in office, running for office, or whatever. So when that stuff gets exposed, but eh, people people are people, okay? I'm not excusing them. I'm just saying people are people. And people people got the freaky deke out there. <laughs> and this girl apparently puked in a shoe. Um, so... Uh, one of the girls, the mother of one of the girls that attended, she told the radio station that, uh, the Broyles had insulted multiple girls. Um, anyway, I, I just want, I guess the whole point, the reason I'm belaboring this point is put things in perspective. It was she right? No, but you know, are we going to crucify her? Cause she's a Democrat. Maybe put her picture back up there again. Never seen her before. You still got it. Okay. I'd let her puke in my shoe. Yeah. Feed that girl some more wine. See if she can come insult me. <laughs> I wonder if she's hanging out just with the dogs. Hello. 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 Golly, we'd be like James Carvel and his wife. She's Republican and he's a Democrat. Anyway, I'm willing to switch sides. I kid. Hey, speaking of mandatory things, Seattle revokes its mandatory bicycle helmet law for racial equity. Da, da, da. I mean, we know that anything anybody does is for racial equity. Is that because helmets don't fit on? I'm not even gonna say it. Not even gonna say it. Whoa. Not even gonna. Is it was the it's the braids, right? Yeah. Is that the deal? Because afros aren't really a thing right now. Oh uh, well, you know the mullet is coming back. Yeah. I, I work I've with never a lot seen of a dude, a white dude on a bicycle. That's not true. I'm gonna say with a mullet, but yeah, I've and, seen some uh, white dudes that have stolen some bikes. And the bikes. curls <laughs> underneath the hats, those are coming back. So yeah. the fro might make a comeback. So the deal is they noticed. Here was the real reason. Um, first of all, I don't think there should be bicycle helmet mandates anyway. If you want to crack your skull on the sidewalk, crack your skull on the sidewalk. I have a big head. Like I, I used to do kind of weird things like ride horses. I've never ridden a horse with a helmet on. I, a lot of people do. I mean, I spent a lot of time in my life on a horse. Never wore a helmet. Um, I spent, you know, then I got into a kind of a cycling phase in my life. <laughs> and I was like, I, I got a big head. Those bicycle helmets don't really fit on my big nuts. So um, now I got the echelon. I try to put the helmet on. I was just going to ask yeah. you, do Stationary you wear bike. a helmet when you're exercising on your echelon bike? No, but I did buy a seat cushion because that is one thing, echelon, I will say. Ooh. And I think they do it so you'll accessorize. Okay. It's a kind of a hard seat. Fair. You re are reminded, guys, that you do have a prostate. Uh, 30 minutes on the echelon, and let me tell you, you are even they got the little hole there where your prostate is. I'm telling you, make you walk crooked for a minute. It will definitely toughen up the boys. You know what I'm saying? So I bought a seat cushion cover. I had been putting a towel over the seat, right? But I, yeah, I used to have one of their competitor brands as well years ago, and that was a hard seat too. So it's just a thing. 
But I never liked wearing a helmet anyway. But so the reason they revoked this is they noticed that uh, the data was suggesting that black and homeless bicyclists were receiving more tickets than others. Uh, so that was the deal. They were getting tickets for not wearing helmets. Now, you know, out there with those, uh, <coughs> those little motorized scooters around downtown areas, you know, and they, I've seen, I've had friends who've gotten their tickets for not, you're supposed to wear a helmet on those. Like I was, I was on the beach in San Diego a couple of years ago. And we were kind of tooling down the, the walk there and cop pulled us over and said we had to be wearing helmets. And we were like, well, we stole these. So, <laughs> um, slapped a kid in the side of the face, puked in a shoe and then jumped on their scooter. The, uh. So, you know, anyway, I, I get it. But I'm opposed to all that stuff. And people say, well, what about seatbelts? Seatbelts different. You see, your body is designed. I believe you shouldn't. I, I, I mean, again, personal freedom, like I don't know that it should be mandated or a law that you got to wear a seatbelt. Rec- it should be highly recommended because your body is not built to withstand anything faster than the speed of run. OK, you get faster than that and there's going to be a serious injury. So I highly recommend that you would wear a helmet or a seatbelt. But should it be a law? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm pretty, pretty libertarian on that right there. Um, I'll tell you what it should be against the law to do is is puke in a 12 year old shoe at a slumber party. Look at her. She's kind of hot. I'm going to I'm gonna blow that up. I'm going to blow that up. Golly. I know. Right on. I wonder how many babies she's aborted. She's a Democrat. Don't they just kill you? <laughs> Woo! Hey, the three-week rule may be the best financial advice ever. What's the three-week rule? Wait three weeks to buy the new car. Wait three weeks to refi your home mortgage. Wait three weeks to finance any major purchase. Why three weeks? Well, because that's how fast the average ScoreMaster user takes to boost his or her credit score on an average of 61 points. And listen, 61 points added to your credit score can save you tens of thousands uh, on everything you finance. So ScoreMaster technology was developed by credit data scientists to boost your credit score higher and faster than you thought possible. ScoreMaster is so easy, it takes about a minute to get started you don't have to wait months for your best credit score try score master for free see how many plus points you can add to your credit score go to scoremaster.com slash chad that's scoremaster.com slash chad during the break i'm going to go check my score master my own account go to scoremaster.com slash chad and we'll be right back Hey, despite the best efforts of those involved, folks, every once in a while, the masks really do come off, and I don't mean in a good way. Let's take a look at the video posted by Predator Catchers Indianapolis, in which Meta slash Facebook manager of community development, Jaron Andrew Miles, has just been caught with his hand in the pedophile jar. Chris, play that video. This is the one time I've done this. The only time. Okay, so you are okay to talk sexual to 13-year-old Corey because you knew in your head that you would not meet up with him. That, that was my rationale. Okay. He asked you what you do. I am the head of a global community development for Meta. That's a pretty f***ing good job, right? Yes, ma'am. Huge. Right? You make good money, right? Um, what, what was the title again? I mean, what is your official title? Manager of Community Development. And you said, make out with you, touch you, suck you. Mm. So let's get the first and foremost visceral reaction to this out of our systems all at once. Ready? You're a disgusting human being. Ladies and gentlemen, all one needs to do to gain some perspective on the trajectory of our society's shifting moral and ethical infrastructure is to flip randomly through the pages of history. There have been a number of civilizations down through the centuries, ancient Greece comes immediately to mind, in which the vagaries of normalized pederasty rear their ugly heads. And of course, it's no great surprise that those civilizations who participate generally come tumbling down in pretty short order. Correlation might not be causation, but to pretend that it's unrelated is folly. So you've got this dude who's a high up muckety muck at Meta slash Facebook, who just also happens to be a really big fan of kids. 
you know, in the wayward uncle's sort of way. Those of us who recognize certain evils for the blight on humanity they are and who would happily supply the 10 or so feet of rope necessary to take care of the problem in an adequate fashion, we look at this and we see utter filth. And we're vocal about it, as we should be. It seems so freaking obvious to point out that a teenager doesn't even have a fully formed brain yet, so expecting that person to make life-altering decisions of a sexual variety is a non-starter. And yet here we are. These people do roam the highways and the byways and the information superhighway most of, most of all. Now, this guy obviously needs to be ousted from his job. He even more obviously needs to be put behind bars for the rest of his life. And if your opinions sync with mine, that's a very short period of time, by the way. But let's talk for a minute about the bigger picture here. Most of you know with the same certainty I do that there's a push in our society to normalize this behavior. You see it here and there. Right now, the push is to make a distinction between people who have pedophilic tendencies and people who act on them. You know the difference? I think in a vacuum, there's an argument to be made there. If you're an adult and you're finding yourself overwhelmingly attracted to children, it does not follow that you must act on the things your brain is telling you to do. Now, maybe therapy can help, maybe not. And I know it flies in the face of all reason on the left and some on the right to suggest that a person whose sexual proclivities run into dangerous and, dare I say, evil realms should strongly consider leading a celibate life. I mean, God forbid, right? But I'm telling you right now, it does not end there. This will turn into us normalizing pedophilia. Remember, leftism doesn't care about anyone. It cares about power. Anyone and everyone, anything and everything is a potential tool of the left. The end is power, and the means is a subversion of any and every dominant paradigm. Now, I've told you this before a thousand times, and I'm going to tell you a thousand times more. In our lifetimes, I think it's likely that we will see a strong and possibly successful movement to decriminalize sexual acts with minors. God forbid it, but I believe it's true. It might sound crazy right now, but cast your mind back just a little ways and ask yourself what sounded crazy 20 years ago that's normal today. That's a frightening thought, but a necessary one. We have to fight this, folks, and we have to fight it smart. And the way you start to do that is to... Uh, just suss out the patterns in their behavior. As for this Jaron Miles guy, he's a piece of shit. And, he, and he's a piece of shit who got placed on a very polished throne in a very elevated position. Do better, Zuckerberg, unless, of course, hiring him wasn't accidental. Now, you think I'm wearing a tinfoil hat. There it is, folks. It's out there. You be the judge. Um, we got we to keep rooting these people out, Chris. <clears throat> Nobody's talking about that in the mainstream media. Nobody's bringing that out that I know of, that I'm aware of. That should be top news. That a guy who's in charge of global community on Facebook, Meta, whatever you call it. And here, I'm the one who's in Facebook jail. I'm the guy in Facebook jail for telling somebody to look up the FBI's findings on January 6th. I'm in Facebook jail. I'm in the middle of an election. But this guy, he's running their communications department and whatever his title was. Global community or whatever the thing is. Oh. So, I mean, they fired him. But, I mean, why isn't anybody talking about it? And Chad. Root them all out, baby. And this is weird because Meta has this, what, Metaverse now that it's trying to do? Yeah. So, you'll have more kids into this world of Meta and whatever Zuckerberg is trying to do. And then this guy here is just like, hey, 13-year-old kid. Yeah. Want to come over here? And by the way, Chad, I will send you the link so you could retweet the full length of him getting caught. Right. Why isn't this not a 60 minutes? 100%. Interview? It needs to be. And because he says a whole lot more. First, he lies. Yes. He says he was just talking. Yes. And then he says he had no intention of meeting up. And then there's that he, he was trying to meet up. I miss Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen used to catch those sons of bitches. All the time. I used to love it when the police tackle their ass in the front yard. It's like, you're free to go. Bam! <laughs> Bam! Take it in the face! Oh, I'm sick of him, dude. Sick of it. Um, that's why I say, Putin, come on in, man. Just hit the button. Hit the button. Joe probably doesn't remember where the suitcase is, so the idea of mutual annihilation is probably not. It, you're probably fine, Vladimir. You can probably smoke us, and we won't even fire back because Joe doesn't know where the football is. Damn. He certainly doesn't remember the codes. 
Uh, Bill back better, better pound sign pound hashtag pound sign pound. Wait a minute, what was it? Where am I? Hey Jack, what's the number, Jack? Let's. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Let's go, Brandon. I agree. Let's go, Brandon. Oh my gosh, man! I you know, interesting things are going on in the world right now. Do me a favor. Um, help me. Help me fight. Prather2022.com. Um, I've tried not to abuse this show. A lot of people would have abused their opportunity on this show to do nothing but campaign. I, I, you know, I throw my stuff in there, but I only do it as it applies to you. Every now and then I throw out a little plea and say, Prather2022.com. There are people who say, well, it's the end of the thing. What's done is done, but it's not. There's a lot more to go. And if you think just because we get through primary day, even if I were to lose, I'm still in the thing because we still have a fight to fight. So we're still in this thing. People say, oh, you can end, stop campaigning. No, you can't. I mean, if I win, we know. But if I lose, I'm still campaigning. Trust me, the fight is still real. Prather2022.com. Be right back. You know, I said on Glenn's program, which, by the way, I want you to go uh, to my pages. I, I don't normally pat myself on the back, but uh, I want to say thank you to you, Chris, to Glenn's producers, um, and to Glenn himself for having me on last Thursday morning, giving me a good 15 minutes to, to state my case about Texas and what's going on. One of the things I revealed in that, and by the way, it was a good interview. It was a good opportunity. You know, so much to cover, but it, but Glenn gave me the opportunity to truly state my case for Texas. One of the things I exposed was that we are the number two subsidizer of Facebook in the nation. We're giving them like 165 million dollars a year in tax subsidies um, to come in here and and basically headquarter here. Uh, we've opened the door up to these guys, and so we've just exposed not only voter, uh, you know. Interference. Interference that's going on. But also, here's, here's a pedophile. And, and the major news is burying it. Nobody's talking about it. Who, who, expo who exposes tech crunch, right? Yeah. Chad, the reason why I know this was because Andy No wrote a story on his personal blog, which is in Locals.com. Then, in order for me to find the first source, because that's what we like to do here, first source reporting, I had to go to TechCrunch.com. Wow. The only one that always had it as a major uh, publication was the Independent UK, which I had to pay if I wanted to read it. So I had to wow. go to TechCrunch, which was the first source information, which if you're not a nerd, you do not know what TechCrunch is. Right. I and never it's very heard of interesting, it. Chad, because that interview that you had with Glenn, I posted it on YouTube. It is the number one most watched video in the last three weeks. Awesome. And if you watch it, you surprise Glenn with some facts that not even he knew. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there, there was a lot revealed there. There's a lot of things Texans don't know overall, and you need to listen to that video. Uh, it's on my Facebook pages. It's on Blaze's uh, YouTube. It's on, uh, you know, I, I, I've shared it on my Twitter. I need to pin it to the top, actually. Um, I just realized I have not done that. I will pin it to the top at Watch Chat on Twitter. You need to watch it. You need to watch it. You need to watch it. Um, and, and no matter what, no matter who you're voting for in this primary, you still need to watch it because I'm going to expose some things that a lot of Texans just don't realize is a reality. Uh, and so it's happening here. And I want you to watch it. I've asked my friends. I'm asking you. Share that video far and wide. It's kind of hard when it's a YouTube video. So I've got to sit down at a computer, hopefully this afternoon, sit down at a computer and actually pull that video out so I can post it directly to uh, Facebook. I don't know if we can do that, Chris, or not. Can you put it on the watch page? Watch Chad Prather. Because if you share a YouTube link on Facebook, then uh, it's problematic. They don't want you leaving Facebook to go to a, a third party. So they, they penalize it with the algorithms. But I want that. I'd love for that interview to go viral. You know, we talk about the truckers. We talk about that situation. But I want you to pay attention to the first segment and to the last part where we're talking about Texas. And um, who knows? Maybe we can even edit it. I hate to mess with Glenn's content, but 
I don't know. Either way, it's all important. Take the time to watch it. And I uh, appreciate you guys. In fact, here's what I want you to do. I want I want you to go and leave a rating and a review of this podcast. Five stars, because that's what we deserve. And But leave a review of the interview with Glenn, okay? Just leave me a review. Tell me what you thought about the interview with Glenn, if you saw it uh, and you shared it, whatever. But go there to where podcasts are offered. Apple Podcasts is real simple. Five stars, five star rating and leave us a review about that interview with Glenn, okay? I want to see what you have to say about it. Uh, you got a TikTok? Let me have it. We've had a lot of comments like this, so we thought we'd elaborate on our pronouns. They are our collective system pronouns. Every headmate's okay with them. We're pronounced fee fix fins and are used as fee went to the store. This item belongs to fix and this item is fins. The words themselves stem from the word phoenix. Thank you for, you know, liking him. Neo pronoun love. Uh. Fee, Finn, Phoenix, Finn, Knee, Zibi, blah, blah, blah. I'm a blah. You're a blah, 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 blah. And I'm a blah, 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 blah. I, how much brain power goes in? I mean, maybe critical thinking skills are not dead. Like, like these, how much brain power goes into coming up with this much nonsense? To just come up with words. I identify as a clock. Sometimes I'm one. Sometimes I'm two. Sometimes I'm seven. Sometimes I'm 12. I don't know. It depends on what time of day it is. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to play with that joke. I think it could be something. Um, you know, I, I, this, this whole, again, this notion of this kind of content, right, is they, they will throw nonsense out there on social media. And, and actually proclaim it as normal. And if I say anything about it, like we need asylums, then I'm the one that's engaged in the hate speech, right? But you're hating on me for not knowing whether or not to call you a phoenix or not, right? Now, let me show you. I'll show you. I have, and you can see it. There it is. There's my phoenix right there. You see it on my chest? There you go. Vote for the man. I'm the only candidate. With the phoenix on his chest. It goes all the way up on my shoulder. They messed up on the beak, though. It looks like a chicken. So I have a cock on my chest. And uh, I, I, you got to be a confident dude. And uh, look at that. that. There's your screenshot right there, Chris. Bam! That's what we're going to do. The phoenix is rising, baby. Rising from the ashes of Meta. Out of the Facebook universe, out of the doldrums of the jail cell, deep in the bowels of the penitentiary system of the big tech universe, comes the Phoenix and Chad Prather's candidacy for governor in Texas in 2022. Let freedom ring, my friends, up from the ashes. Let freedom ring. Prather2022.com. We'll be right back. The Texan Theater, Greenville, Texas, Friday night. Come see us. Me and some friends are going to be there doing a show. It's an expensive ticket. Expensive ticket, that's right. Uh, but you get dinner, you get drinks, you get all kinds of stuff with it. Uh, go to watchchad.com where all the fun stuff is. Go shopping, too. Uh, we're about to have the new 22tees.com store up and ready. Uh, but I will say there's going to be tons of information there. But go to chatonblaze.com. Get your gear, Kamala sucks. That's right. Go buy it. Chadonblaze.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Somebody just sent me a message. They said, if we go to chadnude.com and we sign up, do we get to see Chad Nude? Have I shown you my phoenix? I want you to go to chadnude.com. We need 100,000 new subscribers this year on Blaze TV. Let's fight back against the big tech and keep supporting independent broadcasters and news organizations such as Blaze. That's right, folks. Have I shown you? My thunder chicken. There it is. Uh, I love y'all. God bless you. We're going to get Humpty Hump tomorrow night on a Wednesday, so don't miss it. We'll see you then. Love you. God bless you. Talk to you then. Bye.